Hello, welcome to the last video in this series of videos on the technique of integration by parts. My name is Nikai Rimmer and I'm here to help you um, hopefully understand the concept a lot better. This is our seventh example here and I think it's the most difficult of all. It's a mixture of an exponential multiplied with the trig function. And we're thinking about using integration by parts because it's a product of two functions but we need to make sure that it's going to work out. There's the hierarchy that we have. Uh, we can't use the shortcut. It would be nice if we could. The shortcut has you doing where um, if there's a polynomial times an exponential or a polynomial times a trig function. That's what the shortcut is really built for. It's called the tabular method. We don't have that. As far as the hierarchy mnemonic goes, lie eight, there's no logarithmic function. There's no inverse trig function. And there's no algebraic function. We're at the bottom where we have trig and exponential, and it turns out that they're actually interchangeable. Which one you want to choose you doesn't matter. You just pick one. And so we're going to try to set this up, and something strange happens with this question. You're supposed to get to a simpler integral, and what's going to happen here is that we're going to get into an integral that looks almost exactly like this one. Okay, we'll be trading in sine for cosine. Let's see it in action. I'm going to choose to let u be equal to the sine. You could definitely do it the other way around, where u is equal to the exponential. It'll also work there that way too. So what do we do with the u? We take its derivative. What do we do with dv? We take its integral. So what's the derivative of sine? It's cosine. And what's the integral of e to the minus t? It's e to the minus t times a negative one. And so that gives us our u um, this gives us our du and our v. Remember how it sets up. I don't have it written on the slide here, but it's the integration by parts formula is the product of u and v minus the integral of the product of v and du. So our integral that we have can be found by doing the following, executing integration by parts and ending up with negative e to the minus t sine t and then minus the integral of v du but but v already has a minus in it so that double minus becomes a plus and then it's e to the minus t cosine t we trade it in the integral on e to the minus t sine t for the integral on e to the minus t cosine t that's a lateral trade that isn't a a forward trade where we're getting where we're getting somewhere to a simpler antiderivative but that's okay though. This will be one of the ones where we have to do multiple times. When you integrate by part again, you'll be trading back from cosine to sine. But don't forget though, when you have to do integration by parts multiple times, there's this beginning part that often gets forgotten about. The UV product in the beginning it has no integral on it. You have to remember to carry that down. So let's just focus on the integral there, e to the minus t, cosine t, and let's use integration by parts on that. Let's be consistent and let u be the trig again and dv be the exponential. What's the derivative of cosine? It's negative sine. What's the integral of e to the minus t? We did it above, negative e to the minus t. All right, so that integral that we traded in for will now give us another integral. It's gonna be the, we're gonna have the product of u and v minus the integral who is the product of v and du. Now I'll be very careful here, it's a triple minus. I hope I can use my laser point. We have a minus on du, a minus on v, and a minus in the formula from the uh, integration by parts. That's a triple minus which ends up as a minus. Very tricky. Okay. All right, great. So I want to go back and now um, I want to uh, write out where we're at right now. We started off with this integral on the left here. We traded it in for the, the uh, e to the minus t cosine t integral. And in blue there is the result of that integration by parts the second time through. Now the first UV is there in black and the second UV is there in blue. 
Okay. So we trade our integral in for our integral. Seems strange. But the calculus is over at this point, honestly. What's going to happen next is all algebra. We have an integral on the left, and that same integral is on the right. Now, it has an opposite sign. If it had the same sign, it would be a problem because it would cancel each other out. But what we're going to do is add that integral over to the other side. Okay, let's use color-coded here. I'm going to use red, and I'm going to add over that integral. That gets rid of it from the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, you just have two of those guys. You have the integral plus the integral, so you have two of them. What's left on the right-hand side are the two individual UV products. The UV from the first time and the UV from the second time. Our job is to find out what this integral is, and what we're looking at is what two times the integral is. And what's on the right-hand side has no integrals on it. It's just products of functions. We're done when we divide by 2. So we have one half of that. Don't forget the plus C because this is an indefinite integral. So it's a vicious cycle. You start off with an exponential and sine. You trade it in for an exponential and cosine. And you do it again. And you get back into an exponential with sine. And at that point, you just do a little algebra to solve for your original integral. Okay, it would have been a little more difficult if we had some multipliers in there with the t's, but we're able to do it. And uh, so that's one of the most difficult ones there. It requires multiple, multiple times of integration by parts, but um, that's generally how the flow happens, though, when you have an exponential times a trig. Um, it'll happen like that. You do it twice, you get back to where you start at, and then you can do some algebra. All right, thank you for watching. Um, hopefully it was helpful to you, the whole series. Um, ends up being about six videos, about 60 minutes long, one hour, all on integration by parts. And my goal was to hopefully um, tell you why the method is what it is and I'll give you a bunch of examples, give you a shortcut, give you some, some sort of uh, memory tools to help you figure things out. And uh, hopefully it was successful. If not, just let me know. If you have any questions, anything that confuses you, please just let me know. I'm here to help. Um, and I'll see you on the next set of videos. All right. Take care. Thank you.